Hello and welcome. My name is Daniel Wallen. I'm a success engineer with Integrate.io. And a fun fact about me is everyone who knows me calls me the dog father. Why is that? Well, we'll save that for the end. Anywho, if you want to level up your sales processes in 2022, we've got a tried and true lead scoring mechanism for you. Before we get started, you need three things to make this process work. The first thing is a CRM platform, customer relationship management. Today, we'll use Salesforce for that purpose. Number two, a database or data warehouse. Today, we'll use Redshift from Amazon Web Services. And number three is an ETL tool, and that means extract, transform, and load. Today, we'll use Explini, which is a key part of integrate.io. So here is a screenshot of what your data pipeline is going to look like. You'll see this um, up close and personal later. But notice right now that Redshift is displayed on top, since that's our source database. And Salesforce is on the bottom, since that's our destination. This is what data pipelines look like inside Explini. And there can be any number of transformations that happen in between your source and destination. Simple use cases might not require any transformations, but we've got them if you need them. And FYI, it's table and field level transformations. Anyway, why Salesforce? Salesforce is a fantastic CRM. We love Salesforce because it's super reliable and gives you the ability to create custom objects with any attributes to define whether a lead is hot or cold. That said, other CRMs such as HubSpot and Pipedrive could serve the same goal. So why Redshift? Any database or data warehouse works, but we picked Redshift because it has superpowers. Redshift provides enough speed and scale for even the fastest growing business. No matter how big you get, your data pipelines will work fine. You can also use machine learning to maximize your outcomes. For example, you could develop a machine learning algorithm that predicts churn risk or the odds of closing a deal. Another possibility is identifying patterns to help you determine the best price point for your offer. We won't get super deep into how this algorithm works, but this diagram from AWS is a good overview. No, it's kind of hard to see, but if you want to see a bigger version, I put the article title down here. If you Google Amazon Redshift ML features, you can see a bigger version of this. So what happens is you load data into Redshift, and then there's a program called SageMaker in the middle, which identifies trends in the background. After it's had enough time to feel confident in its predictions, you can use SQL queries to test out different hypotheses to make sure you're making the right moves for your business. And again, you can read more about this at aws.amazon.com. Integrate.io. Integrate.io is on a mission to turn the data warehouse into the heartbeat of your organization. We provide a low code solution and user friendly interface that helps you operationalize your data. Whether you need a data pipeline, APIs for reporting, or real time data replication, we have you covered. Integrate.io also has a service to optimize Redshift. So any data that your BI professionals or data analysts or whatever you might call them, they will be able to get that data in Tableau or whatever BI tool faster. No more slow loading. Today, we're going to focus on Explini since that's the product you'd use to update your lead data in Salesforce. For example, on a leads object or on an opportunities object or whichever object you might use. Now, remember that Redshift is the data source and contains a raw lead score. And Salesforce is the destination, and that's where we're going to send a lead grade. Lead score, lead grade, two different things. We'll touch on both. All right, so lead scores. Now that you understand the technology we're using today, let's discuss the philosophy behind it. 
The goal is to assign your leads a number score that determines how likely that deal is to close. Actions and events that determine the lead score could include website visits, webinar views, email signups, survey responses. You can read the rest of those. Uh, but there are a lot of different actions, events and, events, and attributes that might determine your lead score. Armed with this information, your sales team will be able to focus on the hottest prospects. And there's a great article on Salesforce that gets in significant depth on this subject. It's called The Basic Science Behind Lead Scoring. You can Google that and it'll come up probably the first result. Here's a little diagram from it to illustrate the concept we discussed here. So what's the difference between a lead score and a lead grade? A lead grade is a great way to activate and automate the most relevant systems or processes. For example, an F could mean no action is required yet. D, that might indicate the lead needs to be researched so you can determine if there might be a good fit. C, that could mean your marketing team needs to segment that lead to the appropriate email list. I don't know how you might segment those demographics, what action they took, which website they visited, whatever the case may be, you would segment them to the appropriate email list. B, that might indicate an outreach outbound process needs to be activated. And outbound outreach, that could include more customization than you could realistically provide with a newsletter. You might send an email, you might send a LinkedIn DM, you might send a video introduction, whatever the case may be. A, that might result in a phone call from your best closer. Uh, in our case, if we at integrate.io, if that lead is an A, we would also do outreach with any additional stakeholders that might influence that decision. For example, if they're super conscious of security, we might try to book a call with our CTO and whoever handles their security. Uh, whatever criteria you use for A, I'm just sharing an example to demonstrate the difference. Okay, so these scores and these processes and these numbers are all 100% up to you. This is just to illustrate the point. Okay, so let's pause to clarify an important point here. It is vital to save a raw lead score in your source database. In this case, we're talking about Redshift. Why is that important? Different teams define success in different ways. Sales, marketing, support, customer success, user experience, all of those teams have very different criteria by which they would grade a customer or a client or a lead or a prospect's health. So you might need several equations that grade the health of leads and customers to fit all of their criteria. All right, so the destination, Salesforce. Salesforce does not need a raw score. All you need in Salesforce is a lead grade. This is true for any other CRM too. And why is that beneficial? Because it allows you to use user access control. It gives you greater control over who can see each object and who can see the data attached to those objects. Only the people who need to see and act on that information will see it. This is also good for focus and concentration, no distractions focus on what you need to act on. So remember the grades are used to activate and automate the relevant process. I've included some common examples on the bottom. A, your best closer reaches out to the champion. B, outbound sends a customized email or DM. C, marketing segments to the appropriate list. We already touched on those, but I just wanna summarize because I know this is a lot of info to comprehend and I wanna make sure that you can act on it after this webinar is done, okay? So all of that said, let's do a quick demo to illustrate the points we've discussed so far. All the tech environments I need are already open. As a reminder, the goal is to win more deals by leveraging Explini and Salesforce. For the purpose of this webinar, we're using Redshift as a data warehouse since it's popular and well-known for its scalability. Other databases and other data warehouses work but Redshift is a solid choice. So let's get out of the slideshow for a brief moment here. We're going to go to Xplenty. 
which I remind you is a, the ATL tool associated with integrate.io, our extract, transform, and load tool. Explini includes a native connector to Salesforce. All we have to do is click this yellow button here. Um, observe that we have a lot more options than Salesforce. FYI, we have analytical databases, we have file stores, we have NoSQL, Mongo, we have object stores such as S3, we have relational databases, and we have common services like Facebook ads, Google ads, Google Drive, Instagram, LinkedIn, anything that you might need. I promise we have it. Or you could use our REST API component to access their API and get the data that way. Salesforce. All you have to do to set up Salesforce, click this button here, choose your environment, which would be production or sandbox. Sandbox is good for testing and QA quality assurance purposes. Uh, and then all you're going to do is click this green authenticate button here. That would open a screen from Salesforce. If you're not logged in, you'll enter your username and password. If you are logged in, you just click the button and you're done. And you're done. It couldn't be any easier. Redshift works a little bit differently. We're going to click that button again. We're going to choose the data warehouse Redshift. And on this one, you're going to need a host name, a port number, and you're going to need to know which access type you prefer. We're not getting deep into this today because it's beside the point, but you could choose direct or an SSH tunnel or a reverse SSH tunnel. If you don't know those terms, feel free to Google them after this webinar and learn more on that subject. All right, so those are the connections. The next thing we're going to do, I'm going to close out of this. We're going to click this box shaped button that says packages. Uh, a package is just Explini's word for data pipeline. I've already got one built out here. So we're just going to navigate to this package or data pipeline and take a look at its structure. And as you can see here, this is the simple drag and drop user interface. Um, and up here at the top is our database source component. So as you see, we're pulling data from a table in Redshift. We'll click Next. You could also throw in some SQL queries um, if your team is familiar enough with the SQL syntax you can add queries and statements here just to kind of isolate which data you want to see and here we've got the table name which is leads current in this case going to click next and that opens up a preview of the schema these are all the fields that we're pulling in from salesforce if you wanted to just select a few fields from that table or object or whatever you want to access and explaining you could just select a few here in this case i'm just pulling them all in okay so we have an id we have created at we have last updated at we have a lead score uh we have last lead activity we have all kinds of info here you can read the rest for yourself and we also have an identifier here to tell you the data type whether it's a string or a date time or an integer, whatever the case may be, uh, it tells you exactly what the data type is, which is great because if it needs to have a different type when it reaches your database, you can either change it here or we can add some components to this pipeline to transform that data in the shape it needs to be in. And here is the data preview. Uh, this shows you exactly what those fields would look like. This is the same structure it would have upon entering Salesforce or a database if you wanted to send it to a database. Uh, we have the lead scores, the lead activities, and some just contact info here, stuff you would expect to have on a Salesforce object or on a database which you're using to transfer data to Salesforce, right? Okay. So FYI, I'm really lingering on this because I want you to know that Explini, if you come in here and you add another component, such as a select component, which is the next one we'll go through, and you scroll down, uh, there's a preview button, right? And this data preview works the same way as the, um, as the schema 
in the database source component. You can preview the data for each component in isolation, which makes it much easier to troubleshoot and debug and just figure out what's going wrong if you get an error message or whatever the case may be. You can debug or troubleshoot each component by itself instead of having to think about the entire pipeline as a whole. So it's a lot easier, right? Okay. So give me just a moment here. Okay, so these are the fields we're pulling in from Redshift. We have an ID, we have created at, updated at, company name, all this good stuff. The one I want you to focus on now is number eight. This is a lead grade. There's a pencil button over here. If you click that, it opens up the explain expression editor. And here we have over 100 methods and functions sorted by category. Some commonly used ones I've seen with our clients are date time, because sometimes you just need to restructure the date in whatever way uh, your SAS, your database, your destination, whatever your destination might be, whatever shape it needs to be in, you can use date time to get it there. And we also have some JSON um, functions, and this is useful because a lot of the time, especially if you're working with an API, for example, there's nested data, and you've got to parse down to access the fields that are deep in that nested data, the JSON functions will allow you to do that, okay? So on top of all the functions and all the methods, you can also write conditional logic here, such as a case statement. And let's kind of decode what this means. If the lead score is 90 or above, we're gonna call that an A. If it's in between 80 and 89, we're gonna call it a B. If it's in between 50 and 79, we're gonna call it a C. And if it's 20 to 50, we're gonna call that a D. Otherwise, it's an F. These, the scoring and grading is entirely up to you. This is just for the sake of example, right? Okay. So all of this looks in good shape to me. We're not going to cover the rest of this pipeline today because, again, that's just beside the point. But all we're going to do is we're going to save it, and we'd normally run the job. This one, I actually have it scheduled in the background, so we're not going to worry about it here. Before I show you the result of this, I would like to show you that Explini can run your packages or pipelines incrementally. And what does that mean incrementally? That means we're only going to process new or updated data. You don't want to be pulling in every last piece of data every single time just because that's too much processing. It'll slow down your process. All we want is the new and updated data. So the way we do that is we come in here and we set up the schedule. Um, where do you want it to be? Days, hours, weeks, months, whatever the case may be. We can schedule this job. And every time the job runs, anything that is new or updated will be sent to Salesforce in this case. And that is exactly where we're going to go next. That is Salesforce. We're going to come over here to this other tab. Let me close this first. We're going to go to Salesforce. And specifically, we're on a lead. We're on the leads object. And we're on a specific lead with the name Donald Tobin. Donald Tobin is the CEO of Integrate.io. What's Integrate.io? It's a software as a service. What's the lead grade? It's a C. What's the lead last activity? It's December 7th, 2021. And what's happened is this job for this data pipeline is running in the background, right? And before that job ran, Donald decided he was super interested in your offer. He was so interested that he said, hey, can you send me a price quote? Could you send me a proposal? Because I really want to consider giving you my business. And you know what that means? That means his lead grade should become an A. You know what else that means? That means he contacted us today. So this lead last activity date should change to January 7th. So let's just test this hypothesis real quick. We're going to refresh this page, see what happens. Go back to the details, let it load, scroll down. Here we are, the lead grade became an A, the last lead activity, January 7, 2022, 10 a.m. Boom. 
perfect. That's exactly what we wanted to see. And FYI, in a real use case, you're going to have a whole, whole, whole lot more leads update than one, at least most use cases I've seen. Uh, I'm just showing you this specific lead because it highlights the point more effectively, I believe. Okay. So integrate.io. Integrate.io, we have more than 100 integrations. We really super duper recommend Redshift and Salesforce, but we provide more than 100 additional integrations. So no matter what CRM tool or database or data warehouse you might use, we can implement a process exactly like the one discussed here today. You could also combine Explini's integrations with Einstein to enrich your lead score. The purpose is to add more data points so your lead scores will be more accurate and provide a true 360 view of your customers. This is totally crucial. It's best to know about your customers' experiences on every medium, whether it's online chat, social media, sales calls, whatever the case may be. Okay, we're going to go back to the slideshow now. We're going to choose the right slide. We're going to present so you can see it all big. There we go. So that's a wrap. As a summary, please remember these key points. Number one, lead scores determine the potential or possibility of closing that deal. Number two, lead grades determine which system or process your team will use. Number three, sales, marketing, support, and UX will have different scoring formulas. Number four, keep a raw lead score in Redshift and send a letter grade to Salesforce. Five, activate and automate any relevant systems or processes on the back end. And six, use integrate.io's 100 plus integrations to get a 360 view of your leads and customers. Not a big fan of reading slides. I feel all those points are super important. Just want to hit them really hard in closing. Thank you so much for joining me today. I would love to extend an invitation before we close. On January 27th, Integrate.io is hosting a big launch event. It's going to be huge, and I recommend going. You can sign up at launch.integrate.io slash launch. Yep, that's two launches. We're so excited about this launch. We had to say it twice in the URL. And you know what else? Integrate.io believes in fun. If you're in the mood for some fun memes like this Anakin and Padme thing you have here, go on LinkedIn and type in your search bar, hashtag integrate IO. I so appreciate you for being here. Again, my name is Daniel Wallen. Uh, this guy here is named Haas. I'm sharing this picture uh, as a fun fact with you. At the start, I told you people call me the dog father. That's because I walk shelter dogs all the time. I walked more than 100. I, well, no. <laughs> Sorry, I misquoted. I walked 95, close to 100, but almost. I walked 95 shelter dogs last year. A lot of the time, I share their pictures on LinkedIn, and I always share their pictures on Facebook. Uh, so anyway, if you love dogs and you want to see dog pics, you're welcome to connect. It's linkedin.com slash in slash web wallen. Uh, if you would like to chat about data or book a data strategy session, this is a totally free thing. There's no cost here. If you would like to book a data strategy session and discuss how integrate.io can help you level up your business in the new year, I would love to have that conversation. You can also email me at daniel.wallen at integrate.io. Lastly, I would be happy to send you a copy of these slides if you would like to have them. If that would be a useful reference for you, just let me know via email or DM and I'll make sure you get a copy. So thank you so much for joining me and enjoy the rest of your day.